Well, tables is a very commonly used data structure and it's also very commonly used view across many websites. You have must observe that on the many websites we have a data which is shown in the list format or it is in the table format. If you have to show some uh, structure data, there is no great way than the table to show it on the UI. So, so today we are going to see what are the some best ways to implement a table in Angular. So basically there are two popular libraries for integrating a table in your application and those are angular material the one which you are seeing here this is an example of material where uh, uh, the look and feel is pretty similar to what we get for other material ui widgets and another is ag grid ag grid is a little advanced one compared to the material and uh, it has a lot of support in terms of the filters in terms of the sorting or any other customization that you want to do so compared to angular material uh, AG grid is a next level and it offers a lot of customization uh, you can do around it you can add and sub tables into it and as you can see this is for the advanced usage where you want to show a lot of complicated data so uh, like the live streaming updates so it is really uh, limitless in terms of showing the tabular data you can take it to the any level you want so for this example we'll learn about uh, how you can implement the tables using angular material and uh, for same i will take you to my vs code and uh, i will create a new component let's name it material table i will simply add a selector of this material table in my app component so that uh, it will be visible on ui and uh, once i have that uh, i will start to write the code of the table so first thing first what you need to do is you need to import a mat table module in your materials module in, uh, in, in the exports area of it so that uh, your HTML elements will be able to understand the tag for the material table. So uh, what we'll do now is uh, first I'll go to a component TS and uh, we'll add a data source for my data table. So for same I have created this interface of the periodic table element and under that I have a name position weight symbol as my properties. So I will create a constant array of it and will name it element data and under that I have added some uh, entries for the uh, periodic table elements. So after that I want to create a displayed columns as a variable where I will decide or where I am maintaining the columns that I want to show in my table and the data source is basically my source of data which is basically I'm taking from the element data. Then uh, after that then I will start jump to my HTML file and I have added a container because I want to add some margin and padding and want to show the table in the center of a page. Uh, so first thing I will create a table tag and a mat table is a uh, if I hover over it you can see that mat table is a component from mat uh, mat table uh, is a module and inside it it's a component and when I pass a mat table to this table tag it identifies that it needs to apply the uh, design and uh, the all other properties like this data source is a custom property uh, of the uh, material stable model that becomes available to us so what I did here I'm saying that data source which is the name of my array I can give it anything that I uh, want to bind to the data source of this table and this is the mat elevations here this is a class for applying the CSS applying the um, design so that it will uh, suit to the mat uh, styles uh, it's optional if I don't give that's also fine and uh, if, uh, if I uh, if I don't give that's also going to render the uh, material table it doesn't matter then uh, I will add the columns so add for adding a column you need to create an ng container and uh, want to give this mat column definition property uh, where you will specify what is the column name and then uh, you have to tell the material that it is the uh, uh, cell definition it is the column basically it is a header and this is what the text you want to show there and uh, for each of this header for each of this column what is the value that you want to render inside it so element i am basically will uh, will have the data source rows and it's saying that the position property of that row you want to show in the position uh, column so similarly you can do for other columns like a name here i'm saying element take the element dot name and uh, mat cell def is a directive that allows you to uh, you know iterate over all the list of uh, elements in your array list of entries in your array and that you can uh, specify which property you want to show so uh, this is more of a syntax of a material table that you have to follow um, then uh, at the end you need to give an uh, row definition then this is for showing 
the header showing the columns and uh, and second line is for showing the rows and that rows will be get mapped to the columns that you have so that's all that's a, a simple code if i go to the browser i'll be able to see the simple table the rows are being picked from the array the constant array that i have specified next step what we'll do is we'll add a pagination to it so pagination is really required in a real scenarios because the data that we get in a table on a, uh, any application that is that can be in a hundreds or thousands of the rows and uh, if you don't put a pagination basically it is going to create a performance bottleneck where you have to load all the data in one go so with the help of pagination we can uh, enable our application we can make our application capable to fetch your data in the chunks uh, in a page sizes so that uh, whenever whatever data user is interested in in that only he can see so with the help of pagination not only we can uh, add a uh, ability so with the help of pagination we can give that flexibility to user to decide how much chunk of data he want to access so for adding a paginator uh, in a material we have this matte paginator where uh, we can specify the property of the page size we can give the option whatever the page size uh, these are the options basically which user can select from this array and he can customize the size of it then uh, this is the uh, label that we just want to show there uh, to help the user and uh, we want to show first and last button on the pagination on the paginator below where user can click and navigate to a first and last page so after adding this html code for matte paginator you need to do certain changes in your typescript file and that are because you want to uh, bind the uh, options that you have for your uh, total pagination size and uh, you want to uh, uh, also import the matte paginator module so first thing first uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll import the matte paginator module and uh, because we need that and uh, this is the uh, behavior of the matte paginator model we need to select the matte paginator element from the dom using view child decorator if you are not about not aware about the view child uh, it's a decorator that allows you to select a particular element from your uh, document object model and you can then apply your uh, logic or apply your code in to change its visibility or to pass or to invoke the methods of the child component so we'll do one more change the data source uh, we will create uh, it as a object of mat table data source using a new and uh, here we pass what is the type of a table that we want to uh, what is the type of a data table we have so we have a periodic table elements it tells that this mat table data source is going to follow the schema and that's what we provide like a element key element data is the uh, object which contains its array sorry it's array that contains all these uh, uh, data and which is of the type interface periodic element so there is a slight difference in the working of the matte paginator you need to add this paginator once your content is initialized that is because uh, your table once you have a table then only you get to know how many rows you have and uh, then only your matte paginator can uh, show you uh, whether to show first page or the second page and if the size of the pagination that you applied depending on it can tell you uh, how many pages are possible so that is the reason uh, your paginator this needs to be initialized after your views initial view initialization has been completed so after doing this uh, we'll go to a material module and there we need to also import a mat uh, paginator module and driving that i think uh, our code should run so if i go to browser now i can see that i have a, a pagination added below and uh, if i choose the 10 rows i'm able to show the 10 rows if i just choose a five then i'm able to sh see the next page first page option and i can uh, go to the uh, any page this is basically for the last page and this for the first page if you have a lot of entries next thing we'll see how to apply sorting and filtering on data tables using material now we'll see how you can add a sorting functionality to your table so that the columns that you have that can be sorted in either in ascending or descending order so you can apply a sorting on any column uh, it can be string number and uh, you can even define uh, what is the logic that you want to use for sorting out the rows that you have in your array so to add a sort first change you need to do in your html in your template is you need to add a mat sort uh, you need to add a mat sort directive in your table so that uh, and you understand that this table has a material sort enable then for which field you want to add a sorting header you need to add this directive 
uh, as a for like in this case i want for the number and for the name i want this sorting to be enabled so i will add a header for that then i will go to my component and uh, uh, then i need to uh, do a couple of things first thing i will do is to import the mat sort after importing a mat sort i will create a sort object which is a view child created using a view child decorator and which is of the type mat sort so that i can select a, a sort element from my html so after having that what i need to do the behavior of the sorting is also similar to paginator where you need to have a table render first and after you have view initialized then only you can apply a sorting so with this i think i'll be able to see a sorting uh, arrows now uh, it's still not there because one step which you need to follow is uh, you need to import the mat sort module and i think now it should be visible so I applied sorting for the number and the name column and I think it's working. It's at it, the elements are sorted here alphabetically. And uh, here if I do, I can uh, see the order is also working correctly. If I have to add the uh, searching or the filtering, what I can do is I can simply create a mat form field and uh, I, where I will have a simple search box, namely input. And uh, inside that I'm using a key up event and on the basis of key up event whenever any key has changed in the search box i want to apply a filter and uh, this is a some placeholder that i kept and uh, input is a variable template variable i'm using uh, which i can uh, get read if i don't want also then uh, what i want is after uh, the supply filter i want to specify which uh, method to invoke and uh, the logic that i wrote here i am selecting uh, the event uh, I'm just taking the value from the event and then uh, on the basis of that value, the filter is applied. For that, I'm using a filter value trim uh, and two lowercase. So basically, this is what helping me to uh, just, uh, you know, filter is the, if you see filter term that should be used to filter out. So is it is a, a built-in method of the material data source, material table data source, which basically just need to have a, a value that it needs to compare and it internally checks whether that value is present on uh, each row. It doesn't matter which column you want to, it checks for the, all the columns and it checks if that value is present in uh, any uh, columns for any row, then it will filter out those rows and will show it. It's also updating the paginator if you see, uh, line number 51, sorry, 52, 52. Uh, it is updating because the result that we get, basically after having that result, we need to change our paginator. So let's go to the UI and see so I can see the filter is there and if I enter any value I can see that the rows are filtered and along with it my pagination also shows the number of rows so if I change the filter the count of rows is also changing now and I can as I was saying you can put this filter the filter since we are using a default default property filter which basically accepts only value and internally decides uh, <laughs> internet has a logic to do and filtering operation so if I pass any other value, uh, it will be able to filter. I can do it on the basis of the number like this, and uh, it will basically, it, it works for all the columns in your table. So that's all for this video, and I hope you find this helpful. Thank you.